and good morning. Welcome to Mount of Olives Church in Mission Viejo. We are so glad you are joining us this morning. Uh, happy Father's Day to all our fathers and grandfathers and uncles out there. Um, today is a great day for us to celebrate. My name is Nicole Sterling. I'm the Director of Student Ministries here at Mount of Olives Church. And like I said, we are so thankful that you're here to join us and we want you to get connected. There are so many great ways to get connected here at Mount of Olives. If you go online to our website, moochurch.org, you can find many ways to get connected. You can even fill out our communication card for this weekend, letting us know you're watching, but also if you need prayer for anything, because we are here for you. We want to pray for you. We want to help you get connected into this amazing community. Also, we have so many things going on. We are also working so hard to find ways to get us to meet back together on Sunday mornings. And so we cannot wait for that day when we can come back and be together uh, in our sanctuary together. Well, I hope you enjoy this morning, this beautiful day that we can celebrate an amazing God that loves us so much. So why don't you join me as we begin this morning in worship. Good morning, Mount of Olives. Happy Father's Day Sunday. I want to give a shout out to all the awesome dads out there. Pray that this is a day that you are just blessed um, by your family, blessed by your community, um, that we honor you um, and all the good that comes with good dads in our lives. So with that, uh, let's worship him this morning.
unravel me with the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Ultimate Father, from my mother's womb, you have chosen me. If 
the cross. Jesus, you show us who the ultimate Father is, who we strive to be. God, I pray all of us as dads, all of us as future fathers, that we strive to be who you are, to be more like you. We cannot be perfect. <laughs> God, we could strive to be excellent men, reflect who you are for our families, for our wives, for our children. God, just, uh, just bless all the dads, bless all the families, bless our whole church community. And uh, let's uh, pray the words you taught us, all is one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. All right, at this time, why don't you say hi to your family, to your small groups, embrace the community around you, also shoot a text um, to others that aren't with you, just let them know that you love them, thinking about them. Odin, what do you want to say? I love Jaden. <laughs> you love Jaden? What about your dad? Can you say Happy Father's Day? Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> All right, let's do that now. Happy Father's Day, dads. We hope it's a wonderful, blessed day because you are vital to us in our lives. And we thank you for all that you bring to us. I've entitled today's message, Dads Matter, because dads really do matter. You're vital to our lives and to our families, to our community, to our church, to the world. Your role is very, very important and significant. So we hope you have a very blessed day. You know, dads are very unique in so many ways. One of the ways they're unique is even in their language. I mean, when a dad says it's a guy thing, that means it makes no logical sense. Or when a dad says it would take too long to explain it, that means he really doesn't know. Or if a dad says, we're not lost, I know exactly where I am, it means you're never getting home again. But really, dads are vital to us and dads do matter. One of the ways I know that dads matter is because what I see is I work with families and I deal with people whose dads have abandoned them when they were children or were very harsh to them, shamed them. And I see what happens when a dad abandons his family or isn't a nurturing father. It damages children and they grow up to be damaged adults. It affects their parenting. It affects their own marriage and it even affects their career. I find that when dads haven't done their job, it's debilitating in people's lives. And so that's one of the ways I know that dads really do matter and they are vital to our lives. When you're a young dad, it's very hard because your career needs you the most at that time in your life and so does your family. And you're trying to do both really, really well and sometimes it's hard and sometimes you, fought, you fail on one side or the other. But dads really do matter. Your children look to you and they think, you know everything. You can solve problems. You'll know what to do. I, that was my, my, my experience with my dad. My dad always knew what to do. It kind of reminds me of the little boy who comes running into the family room, uh, crying hysterically, very upset. His father's trying to console him, calm him down. And finally he learns that the little boy has swallowed a penny and he believes he's going to die. And as much as the father tries to calm him down and get him to relax, he can't do it. So finally, he reaches into his pocket without his son noticing. He pulls out a penny and then pulls it out from behind his son's ear and says, here it is. His son was amazed, stopped crying immediately, started to giggle with glee, and then grabbed the penny, swallowed it and said, do it again, daddy, do it again. Well, we do look at our dads in that way, don't we? That they can do anything. They'll know what to do. They'll find a solution. Dads matter for so many reasons. I see it at church all the time. When a mom brings their children to church, it's vital, very foundational, very important. 
And when a dad is a part of the leadership team of bringing that child to church or those children to church, it takes it to the next level. And when your children see you in church, dad, and they know that you're there doing it for yourself and not for them because they can spot a phony in a minute. But when they know that you are doing it for yourself, it makes a huge difference in their life. They're watching and they're noticing and they see you close your eyes during prayer. They see you listening to the sermon. They see you following along with the Bible. They see you singing the songs. And it makes a tremendous impact on their lives. So dads, you really do matter. You're very important in our lives. And you care a great deal. And sometimes we see it come out so much when you're involved in the athletics of your children. You want your child to be the fastest. You want your child to hit the ball the hardest. You want your son or daughter to be able to kick that soccer ball the most accurately. And when they don't, sometimes we get a little pushy. Sometimes dads get a little, go a little overboard, get a little carried away. Well, we gotta remember that sports isn't the only thing we've got to teach our children. In fact, one coach uh, took a step that I thought was very interesting. He, he put a sign out in front of the practice field and the sign read these words. Your child's success or lack of success in sports does not indicate what kind of parent you are, but having an athlete that is coachable, respectful, and a great teammate, mentally tough, resilient, and tries their best is a direct reflection of your parenting. Well, dads and moms, we got to think about what we are teaching. Dads matter, and dads matter spiritually. I want you to take a look at this first Bible verse from the book of Psalms. King David is writing these words. He says, My life is an example to many, because you have been my strength and my protection. You have been my strength and my protection, and others see that. They see that I depend on you. They see that I rely on you, King David is saying, the psalmist. And that's what our children need to see in us as dads. They need to see that we are dependent on God, that we're reliant on God, that we're not just trusting on our own ability, but we are reliant on God. They need to see that in us, hear that from us, so that when life gets hard and difficult and there's nowhere else to go, they will know they can go to Almighty God because you did it and you showed them the way. Yes, dads matter. And dads matter spiritually as well. You may never have thought of yourself in that way, but you're a spiritual leader in your home. You're a spiritual leader. I'd like you to start thinking of yourself as a spiritual leader in your home. You may have never done it. You may never focused on that. You may have never functioned in that way. But I want you on this Father's Day in 2020 to start thinking of yourself as a spiritual leader in your home. So what do spiritual leaders do? They look for a teaching moment. They're, they're aware and looking and seeing a moment when they can speak a word of truth into the lives of their family. And the second thing they do is they teach a spiritual truth. They're able to speak a spiritual truth and articulate it. You see, being a spiritual leader is to do more than be an example. It's more than being a potted plant, if you will. It is being able to articulate and be assertive enough to speak into the lives of our children spiritual lessons they need to know and they need to understand. You know, I've been thinking about chemistry teachers, algebra teachers. What would happen if they thought of themselves as only an example? that the students should learn just by watching them. Well, not much would be learned. It's when those algebra teachers and chemistry teachers and all other teachers speak it into existence, into the mind and the heart of the student, that education takes place. Well, now the same is true spiritually. When we speak it into the life of our children, it actually starts to happen. In fact, the Bible even says faith comes through hearing and hearing through the word of God. So we need to speak it into their lives. So here's how you begin. You begin with small steps. I'd encourage you, if you've never thought of yourself as a spiritual leader, I would like to encourage you to start taking small steps. 
Start reading the New Testament every day. Read a chapter. Start in the Gospel of John. Read a chapter a day. And then when you've read the Gospel of John, read it again. And if you want, read it again. And then go on to Galatians and maybe Ephesians. And do the same with those books. And spend some time in prayer as you do. And as you take those steps, you're beginning to grow. And then maybe you'll join a small group so you can study the Bible a little more and know a little more. So that when those teachable moments happen, you have a word. You have insight. You have knowledge. You've got something to say. You know, on Father's Day, we're giving a lot of gifts to fathers. One of the best parts, I think, of Father's Day. And we're giving a lot of gifts to our fathers. We're thanking them. But dads, you matter. And you matter spiritually. And I'd like to encourage you to give a gift to your family. I really mean this. I'd like to encourage you to give a gift for your, to your family. It won't cost you any money. It won't be very difficult to do, really. Here's what I want you to do. When it comes time for dinner tonight, Father's Day dinner, when the meal is ready to be eaten and you're ready to start praying over the meal, someone else is maybe going to lead the prayer, I'd like you to step up and say, I'd like to pray tonight doesn't have to be a big prayer. All you might have to say is, Lord, thank you for this day and for this food. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all you got to do. But I know this, that when you do that, you're going to touch the heart and the very soul of your family, especially if you've never done it before. They're going to be moved. They're going to be touched. And you will be a spiritual leader in that moment in a very simple way, but it will have power in their lives. You're a spiritual leader. People are looking to you. Your family's looking to you. Look at this verse from Proverbs 23, 24. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. You know, there's going to be a day when we're going to look back on our, our lives. We're going to look at our career we're going to evaluate what we did. We're going to evaluate our involvement in our church, in our community, for our country. You're going to look at uh, how you did as a parent, as a husband, and you're going to evaluate your life. And wouldn't it be nice to be able to look back with some joy? Like King Solomon is saying, I look back with joy on my life and I, can, I rejoice that my children are walking with the Lord. I rejoice that they are being true to their faith. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could look back and see that because of our spiritual leadership, our children are walking with the Lord. You see, what we're talking about is a legacy, leaving a legacy for our children. That's what we're talking about. Spending time with them, speaking up and being a spiritual leader for them, knowing that we've got to take the time to do it. We can get so caught up in our career but we need to stop and realize we're called to be a spiritual leader in our home. You know, when Governor Mitch Daniels, before he was governor of Indiana, I worked in the White House under President Reagan. And uh, one day as the president came back from the White House after a long trip, and Mitch had been on the trip, and they were unpacking and getting settled in, and the president turned to Mitch and said, it was late at night, he said, well, Mitch, are you going to go right home now? He said, no, Mr. President, I still got some work to do in the West Wing, and I've got four children, and maybe one or two of them will be up still. And the president said, oh, Mitch, go home right now. It's important that you're there, because in the years ahead, you'll be waiting up for those children. Well, the president was right. Our first responsibility is at home, to be a spiritual leader. That's the legacy we want to leave. As we look back on our life, that's the kind of legacy we want to leave. In, in the third letter of John, chapter 1, the gospel writer John says these words, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Now, I know he was probably speaking about his spiritual children in that church, but I think it's applicable to our lives as well and to our families. We want to be able to look back over our life and rejoice that because of our leadership and the legacy of our leadership, our children are walking with the Lord. Now, you know, we have enough Little League coaches. We really do. We probably have enough soccer coaches. 
We know that we have a lot of fathers who are very committed to their children's education, always encouraging them to get good grades and study hard and do well on their SAT scores. But you know what we need even more? We have enough of that. We need spiritual leaders. We need dads who see the vision. Everything in life stands or falls on leadership. And just look around. We're in a time of crisis. We're in a time of confusion. We're in a time where people need a moral compass in their life. And dad, you're the kind of spiritual leader that can bring it. We need to work at it. We need to dedicate ourselves to it. And so I want you to know that dads matter. But even more than that, dads matter spiritually. I want to encourage you to stand up, speak up, be articulate, be one who is assertive in leading the way for your children and your family to know Christ and make him known. God bless you on this Father's Day. May it be a great blessing to you this day, but may it be a time of challenge where you realize on this day you could take new steps. Let's pray together today. Lord, we thank you for our dads. Bless them on this day. Give them great joy. But Lord, also remind them of the great calling you have given them to be spiritual leaders in their home. Help them, Lord, to do what you're calling them to do and to be able to look back on their life as a life of legacy. Whether they're a father with adult children or grandfathers, help them to look back on their life with a legacy. It's not too late to leave a legacy. Help us do it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you on this Father's Day. There's been a song that's been getting me through the last few weeks called No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. And um, thinking of what Pastor was saying and the importance of a father's role and the importance of the spiritual maturity in a dad. Um, there's a verse in this song that says, let my children tell their children, let this be their memory that all my treasure was in heaven and you are everything to me. And um, that's just a prayer that my children can tell their children that, that I led an example that joy was found through me and in me only through Jesus Christ. And um, just thinking of our Heavenly Father, the ultimate dad. My uh, daughter's been battling um, some big health problems and we've been in the hospital and seeing her scared, confused, angry, frustrated, tired seeing even the joy in the moments while we're there. I think of myself and how sometimes I look at our Heavenly Father, that we are His children. Sometimes we're scared, sometimes we're confused, sometimes we don't know what's going on. But what I know now through how I see my daughter is that He loves us and is always wanting something good for us and that that spiritual growth, that spiritual faithfulness can blossom the most beautiful things through the trials. Once we get up to that hilltop from that valley, that we see incredible growth and we see incredible strength through moms and through fathers, through their spiritual trust in Jesus. There's nothing like it. And so I encourage all of us to know that importance of faith, that importance of just knowing who our Abba is, that he is always loving and he gets us through because we can have faith that he is working for our good. So uh, I hope you enjoy the song, digest it and uh, take it in. No one cared for us like Jesus and that's how we can always have joy found in him through all our burdens, through everything.
if my heart could tell a story If my life would sing a song If I had a testimony If I have anything at all No one ever cared for me like Jesus His faithful hands held me all this way And when I'm all in green, all my days are numbered on the earth Let it be known in you alone my joy was found Let my children tell their children Let this be a memory Oh, my treasure was in heaven And you were everything to me No one ever cared for me like Jesus His faithful hand has held me all I'm old and gray and all my days are numbered on the earth Let it be known in you My joy is found I found my joy I'm still in love You're still enough for me Still on You're still my God, you are good. Through that goodness, our joy is found, Father. Jesus, I just thank you for this morning, for the things you give us every day, the breath in our lungs, the community around us, your faithfulness, Jesus. I thank you for that. God, I just... Uh, Pray that as we sing this final song that we leave this service with this peace in our heart that you are good. That we surrender now that we give you everything because your goodness is everlasting, it is here. 
Let us take us, take that with us as we sing about who you are, that you are good. fails me all my days I've been held in your head from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will see the goodness of God good pray you bless us let us just be filled with joy no matter the state because you are good you love us in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you have an amazing Father's Day and uh, we'll see you next week